Hello everyone, uh, I'm very happy to welcome today on Amwal Mag, uh, Sandro Salsano, president of the Salsano Group. Uh, Salsano Group is a very well conglomerate uh, investing in real estate, private equity and technology. Uh, despite his young age, uh, Sandro is known in South America as the Warren Buffett. Uh, he has investments in more than 100 companies in sectors going from technology to luxury good to real estate. And it's good to have him today to give us a bit of a, a full landscape of what is happening on a global scale uh, on the investment side. So thank you very much for, for, for joining us uh, today. Uh, I'll, I'll go straight away. So what is the thank investment you so climate for you? Thank you. And the private equity trends that you see uh, in this COVID-19 situation? Uh, yes, you know, obviously it has been a challenging year for everybody. Uh, and we think COVID has been accelerating some of the trends we we saw uh, in the past. For example, the shift uh, with e-commerce from retail towards uh, uh, warehouses, so industrial park. Uh, and, as, and, and we have been adapting to that in our portfolio, investing more into uh, logistic, uh, industrial, uh, free trade zones, uh, as well as agro. Um, uh, so on the private equity side, I would say we've been uh, uh, doing very well, uh, especially in the liquid part. Obviously, um, the liquid part of the, the market has been uh, performing extremely well, but that keeps me very worried because we, uh, I believe that that's uh, uh, driven mostly by, by liquidity, by the Fed. And the Fed is really creating moral hazard. Uh, you see, uh, when you get money uh, to invest and you're forced to invest, you feel compelled to invest. I don't think that's a good sign. Usually, uh, that creates bubbles, and we saw it uh, in, uh, I think, in, in some in some aspect in real estate, but definitely in the in the technology side. Uh, we've been investing in technology last 14 years, and uh, we didn't do anything in the last two years. Um, apart from exiting some IPOs. Uh, I think that's very worrying. Uh, I'm very worried uh, about the valuations uh, in technology, especially. Um, and yes, and it's been challenging for, uh, for many sectors. I don't expect some of the sectors like tourism or airlines to go back to pre-COVID level anytime soon. Uh, I think many analysts starting with Goldman Sachs and other from Wall Street are too optimistic in my view. Um, so I think it's good to be cautious. You know, I think that sometimes doing nothing is the best strategy uh, rather than doing stupid things. And uh, uh, absolutely. And so how do you see the environment in terms of uh, uh, co-investment between family offices, between groups uh, on a global level? Do you feel that they're uh, all with the same uh, uh, views as you, that everything is a bit hyped and so they're a bit cautious? Uh, and what are the sectors where you feel that there's things that can still be done on the co-investment and, and global level? Yes, we do quite a lot of co-investments with other families uh, globally. So we, uh, we try to partner with families that have the same uh, alignment of interest, also same philosophy. Uh, the, my view is always at least 10 years. You know, I don't, I'm not a speculator. We don't take short-term views. Um, we have been active this year, especially in the agro and uh, the logistic. So we are doing the largest free trade zone in uh, Central Latin America now. Um, and we have other families that have been joining from Middle East especially, but also uh, Europe, US. Um, and I think that's a good sector. As I was mentioning before, uh, logistic is doing very well. Look at Amazon. Um, and just look at any logistic play, but also the agro has been very resilient. So we think we are, that's a good sector and we've been investing more. Uh, and again, for us, it's a question of uh, partnering with the right people. You know, we, we, we take either a majority position or a minority, uh, but it's important to have same values. You know, the, uh, the biggest mistake we have made is where we, uh, we had some, uh, uh, we partnered with some some co-investors that were not necessarily aligned with us. You know, they were more short term. Um, and as I said, you know, we I believe in cycle. I think that you need to have at least in private equity ten years view. Um, things don't happen overnight. or don't happen as fast as you would love to. And of course, you know, you make ten investments and, and four might not go as planned. But uh, the uh, you know, and who tells you that to get sold investment right is probably either lying or uh, he, he never did an investment. So, so I think that it's important to manage uh, 
uh, expectations. Uh, we try to be very cautious, very conservative. And of course, you know, not necessarily we get it always right, but I think that today, the, the, where I see really a very good interest uh, and potential for us, so we always try to limit our downside we don't use debt, for example, and we look at uh, uh, long-term is logistic and agro. Uh, do you think that despite this uh, current environment, is it interesting for uh, Middle Eastern families to look into South America? Uh, Pre-COVID, there was a lot of uh, uh, themes going about the South-South uh, uh, trade and uh, business cooperation, and we saw a lot of uh, interest uh, out of Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and even Riyadh for South America, Brazil, and all over. Do you think that investors or families in the Middle East should, uh, or even sovereign wealth funds should uh, look into South America at this stage or should maybe wait uh, according to, to the, the climate that we're seeing? I, I think it's a, very, it's a very interesting time to look at the Central Latin America. Uh, we do have business partners in the region, Middle East, and actually they are increasing their position. Uh, we are looking at deals in, uh, in Central Latin America, uh, especially if you are, as I mentioned, in the agro sector, which is, I think, very interesting right now. Uh, you saw it's been very, extremely resilient during COVID. It's actually a few companies we, we, where we are shareholders, they've been doing very well. Uh, they grew more than expected this year, as well as logistic, you know, for example, think of Panama, the canal, you know, it's there, it's, it's growing, uh, global trade will continue, uh, notwithstanding the geopolitical tension between China and US. Uh, so I think that it's important that uh, uh, you look at those markets also as a matter of diversification. We like Panama a lot because we have a US dollars, it's a very stable economy. Uh, Bank of America is... Uh, is, is, uh, is uh, predicting a 10% GDP growth next year, which is very high. So it's going to be probably one of the fastest growing in the, in the world. Uh, and, it's, and it's very stable uh, also politically. Uh, and then in the region, you know, we, we looked at Guatemala, Dominican Republic, Brazil. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we might do something in Mexico this year as well. Uh, my favorite country today would be still Panama because of the reason I told you, the canal expansion infrastructures are second to none. Uh, and also you have a very interesting angle because the, uh, it's really a global, uh, uh, the position, so it's really a global uh, 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 trade uh, that you're looking at. While in LATAM, uh, you need to be a bit careful, I think, on the, on the political risks. You may, you may run, for example, in Brazil uh, or Mexico, but the, the, you'll find opportunities also because, you know, you can... Uh, this is a time where you can uh, negotiate and get good valuations. Uh, so I think the, those two sectors are the one who actually we are involved and where we are, we are investing more. And I think for Middle East would be, a, as I say, the good diversification. Uh, and also if you want to stick to dollars, uh, you, you can have good opportunities. And, and remember the you know, Emirates was planning, for example, a direct flight to, to, to Panama from Dubai. Um, I think that they're still considering as well as uh, th there's been very strong ties with Middle East. Uh, uh, Latin Middle East, they, they, they have uh, great ties and, and the governments, they're getting closer. So I think that uh, um, it makes lots of sense to, uh, you know, maybe to uh, underweight uh, uh, Europe and US because valuations, they went bananas. You probably saw starting with the big tech to any sector, really, the liquidity has been driven has been really driving up all those companies, not only on the, on the liquid market, but also on the private equity side. And while we see very good valuations, for example, in, uh, in the sector I mentioned, especially uh, in our part of the world. And, uh, and I think that, you know, we, we should grow uh, in some cases, uh, like Panama, for example, even more than US or Asia and Europe, definitely. So it makes also sense. Uh, I want to move to, to another topic because I know that you're very committed to philanthropy and this is a theme that is starting to, to take space and take more importance uh, in the Middle East. So when you talk about philanthropy, do, do you think that uh, um, families in globally should stick together to uh, create global programs as the world is changing and becoming more global or should it be more on a, on a local level? Well, I'll tell you what we do. We, we like to uh, look at both ways uh, globally, uh, but also we like to adapt uh, 
uh, regionally some model that has been working. For example, I give you an example. We, um, you're, you're familiar with Dubai, and we have been on the, uh, I've been involved with the Global Teacher Prize done by uh, the Varki Foundation and the Sheikh uh, Al Maktoum is always giving the award to the best teacher in the world. We're gonna have the award this year, virtually this year, and um, I'm I'm actually one of the one of the of the committee. A voting for the teacher is always very difficult as there are some amazing stories um, and we, we want to do it in our part of the world as well as uh, I, I chair uh, uh, one of the chapter for global dignity with the Crown Prince Alcon of Norway. There is Richard Branson involved, there are, there is, there are three Nobel Prizes, two to uh, and so we, we have we have a very good group, and we we like to actually ad, adopt and uh, apply successful model regionally. And uh, obviously, we work also with other families uh, that, are, that have similar um, uh, similar views and also similar interests. Uh, we we try to focus at least from my side uh, on education and the kids. Uh, but 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 I I think it's good to start sooner rather than later. I always try to encourage, you know, young entrepreneurs to start. A uh, dollar today is worth much more than, you know, a hundred dollars you give out when you're eight years old. And uh, and you don't really need all these. Uh, if you do well, you can donate even, you know, 0.1% or 1%. doesn't need to be, you know, giving pledge where it's, you know, over 50% and then not necessarily is given away and, you, and the average is very high. I think that you can start very, very young and, uh, and inspire other, other generations so that, uh, uh, they can do some good as well, as well as on the business level, we signed the uh, IFC and also the United Nations uh, uh, SDG, the Social Development Goals. So we, we are very committed to that uh, uh, with oceans, uh, as well as with uh, infrastructure investments. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, we don't do any harm. And, uh, and I think that on the philanthropic side also, you can... Uh, uh, you, you can have your own teams and your own uh, values uh, and really make a commitment early rather than later. Uh, the COVID-19, as you mentioned, accelerated, acted as a catalyst for many of the problems and the issues that we were facing. Uh, many uh, were starting to put the blame on uh, capitalism on business people and and seeing that thing do you see that uh, moving forward whether it's on an entrepreneurial level or on a large business level they will need to do business in a different way and consider other factors i mean you're familiar with the world economic forum and the great reset and uh, coming right after also the fourth industrial revolution uh, i mean is anybody strong enough to be able to foresee the future today and be able to commit to to great objectives seriously uh, I, I think that uh, as you mentioned uh, and I, I agree with you has uh, been in, unfortunately uh, a, a, an element of separation rather of unity. We see uh, social hatred uh, not only in the US but really globally and we need more social inclusion. We need, uh, uh, we need to uh, also promote the young entrepreneurs and you know failures and, and you know failure is, is part of it. You know we fail and uh, uh, you know we invest in things we that not necessarily happen uh, as we plan or uh, we, fail, we invest in companies that not necessarily do as well as we thought, but you, you want also on the other side uh, promote entrepreneurs because you want that they are seen as a, a, a positive force so that you, you create jobs, you're, uh, you're adding to the society, uh, giving back also to the society. Also, in, in our case, you know, we look at uh, the development goals and, uh, uh, and really trying to uh, have certain parameters for our investments, not to harm uh, anybody or... Uh, or, or the planet as well. So I think that it's, it's important that uh, I feel like we have a, a, a role to play. Le leaders should stand up. We have a lack of leadership today, I think, on the government side. And I think the private sector can take that, that role um, and really uh, trying to be more inclusive because, you know, we need a, a, a capitalism that's more inclusive. Uh, and uh, capitalism has been a very positive uh, force, but we, we, I think we can do better. 
Um, and, in, and, and I would say that obviously some, some politicians, they, they are using their populism to, um, to uh, fuel some hatred against, uh, you know, wealthy people or entrepreneurs. So you, in the US, for example, you have the Elizabeth Warren saying that billionaires are, uh, shouldn't exist or, or that, you know, we shouldn't have uh, uh, basically uh, entrepreneurs. And I think that's wrong because you, you still need role models uh, that, you know, successful role models, because you want also kids to be inspired, right? And, and money obviously shouldn't be necessarily the only uh, key driver or the only driver uh, of success. You know, there are, for me, success means having uh, my, my family with me and, you know, being healthy and do something I love. Uh, so, that, so, so I think that th th we need to change a bit also the parameters. Um, it's not necessarily driven by you know revenues and uh, if you if you if your company is a trillion dollar company or not. Uh, so I think that should change too. Uh, and as I said, the we discussed it several times uh, also recently at the, at the World Economic Forum. Uh, we did the virtually this year with young global leaders. Um, it's 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 time also to reflect and to have a great reset um, and maybe reinvent ourselves. You know, I think that. Uh, uh, we need to adapt and we, we, it, it's a good, it's been a good experience for many of us, uh, at least I can tell you personally, where you, you look at maybe a new ideas and, uh, and you really uh, spend more time with the family, but also you reinvent yourself, you know, on a business level, you think that uh, uh, you focus on what you really like or you want to do and, uh, and, there are, and there are new sectors also. Or in our case, logistic and agro that has been actually doing very well and where we applied social inclusion and we're applying also the United Nations Development Goals. So we, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy about that. Sandro Salzano, president of the Salzano Group, thank you so much for your time and these uh, insightful views on the, the global economy and business in general. Uh, I, I wish you to stay safe and to catch up really soon. Thank you very much. Likewise. Thank All you. the best to you and family. Cheers.